Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm having a hell of a time getting a picture ready on my um, tablet to show you. It won't expand it, so it's going to have to do. So we're here in my reading wrap-up. So what I read in January. I read 12 books in January, which is great. I'm aiming for 200, so it's a little bit under, but I know I can do it because there will be shorter books and there will be much longer books. Oh, hello. It's done it now. There we go. Okay. So let's go through them in order. So the first book I read in January was Phantom uh, by Susan Kay. So this is the story of the, ma the child who became the Phantom of the Opera. So it tells you the story of why, well it basically the back says, why was he so brilliant, so terrible, a man at once hideously cruel and erotically tender, a genius of magic, of music, of everything that was beautiful, and a man so tormented by his own ugliness, he recoiled into a world he created for himself. Here is the haunting tale of his mother, his birth, his childhood, his incredibly, incredible odyssey across, across Europe, France, Italy, the courts of Persia. He could have been the most brilliant man in the world, and instead he became a mysterious and terrifying recluse, desperately craving the fulfilment of of love. So it basically is a backstory to uh, the person, that, the man that became the Phantom. It's really, really good. It's really moving. It's quite sad. It's quite tragic. Um, but yeah, it's worth read. And I rated it. I rated it three stars because it went on a bit and there was some of it you're like, really? But it was still good. Now, the second book was an ebook, and I've got to just go get it up right so that it's going to play up. And it was, oh, there it is. Ghosts of Christmas Past by H.P. Bain. So this is a novella in the Braddock and Grey Case Files series. The next book isn't out till April 30th, so we've got a while. I'm really looking forward to it. So this is basically the story of Sullivan Grey. In When we last found him, he'd lost his power to communicate with the dead and to see the dead. And we find out in his in this book that it's because he doesn't want to see them. It's, it's not his powers haven't left him. He's blocking them. Um, so talking to a friend, they talk about how he can get them back. And basically, he remembers the ghosts of Christmas past. So people he'd helped um, in the past, whether it be family or friends or strangers. So in the end, he can start seeing the ghosts and help them move on again. So there's that one. I loved that one. I love those stories. I think they're well written and I rated it five stars. Uh, the next book on the list was Stephen King book one for 2012 out of 2012, 12 for 2022. And that was End of Watch. This is book three in the uh, Bill Hodges trilogy. So this tells the story. It's the final wrap up of Mr. Mercedes. Uh, trilogy of this this man who drove a Mercedes into a crowd killing them in this story uh, survivors from that um, incident are killing themselves um, and Bill Hodges got to figure out why because all the evidence points to Brady Hartsfield but he's supposed to be like in a unresponsive state so he's not kind of locked in but almost he's like vegetative vegetative but he's not because he has a power that uh, they can. So um, he uses this sort of handheld gaming device to sort of hypnotise people into doing what he wants them to do. But he can also take over bodies as well. It's a really good story. A fitting end, but tragic end to the trilogy. I need a drink. And I gave it five stars. Next one's on the Kindle, so I've just got to go and change the picture. Okay, the second ebook and last ebook I read in January was uh, a sort of cozy mystery one called Poison in Paddington by Samantha Silva. We meet our heroine, whose name I've forgotten. Never mind. Um, um, at the end of a shift in a hospital in America, she is a trainee doctor. She's at the last month of her rotation, and before she um, qualifies. So I don't like the way it's making me look. Hang on. A bit better. Um, when she is pulling out and she is sideswiped by another vehicle and that vehicle hits her driver's side and takes it out and she almost dies. She does survive but she then has damage to her fingers so she cannot become a surgery, a surgeon as she wanted to. She doesn't actually want to be a, um, a GP as we would call them over here. 
so she packs up and as she has dual nationality, her father's from Scotland, she moves to London, to Paddington and basically does whatever she can to survive. She has little jobs and she has a, a shared flat um, and she meets this, this, um, this woman. She's having coffee and, and, and that when somebody is murdered, um, they're poisoned at a coffee stand, um, a lunch stand. And she meets this woman who sort of helps out with the police, but she's not a member of the police force. She's like, it's kind of like what Sherlock Holmes was uh, in, in the 1880s, 1890s, um, helping them with various cases which she does. Now our heroine um, joins forces with them and provides sort of medical um, help with the cases. Uh, through this woman who's, I think she's Polish, she finds an apartment or a flat very 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 cheaply in Paddington and I say very so cheaply that I would kill if I could have it, you know, really nice one. Um, and help solve the crime of who the killer was and why the victim got murdered. It is a really good, quick, cosy mystery. It didn't take me long to read. So there's only two that I actually read of the um, Kindle books. Actually, I missed the next book, which is uh, A Fixed Body. As long as we read them all, we get to them. It doesn't matter. What order I put them in, really, does it? The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman. This is the second in... I want to say insert, but it's not. This is the second instalment, is the word I'm looking for, in the Thursday Murder Club um, series. So we meet our usual suspects of... Oh, it got a bit wet, I'm afraid. Um, Elizabeth, Joyce... Um, I can't remember the other two. Ron and Ibrahim go on a hunt. So Elizabeth re receives a letter from somebody she used to know and used to work with when she was in MI5. Um, he is in danger and wants his help and wants her help so she helps him. Um, eventually he and his handler get murdered and it's just a matter of they've got to figure out who did it. Was it um, his handler's idea? Was it somebody else? <laughs> It's a really good story. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. I enjoy these books by Richard Osman. You don't hear Richard Osman's voice when you're reading them. Sometimes when somebody's famous, and Richard Osman's very famous over here as a TV presenter, that if they're so famous and they write, but you hear their voice rather than their characters. But I find with Richard Osman's, his writing is so good that you actually hear the voices of the characters. You don't hear his voice at all. So I love the first one. I love the second one. This a lot, will be going into my permanent hardback collection. Obviously Stephen King will be going into my permanent collection. They're the only ones at the moment. There, there are more. <laughs> it's quite a permanent collection month, I will be honest. But I love this. If you enjoyed the first one, do pick up the second one. It is just as good. The next book is one I found on TikTok because I've been making TikTok videos. I've got two TikTok channels. I've got Andrea Life 123, Andrea Life, which is all about everything that goes on, mostly books, photography, my cat, just general. If I go for a walk, go somewhere. And my other one is Marilyn and Me, which is obviously all about me and Marilyn Monroe and my Marilyn collection. So I found this book, uh, in fact a couple of the books this month are from there, and this is this one. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I absolutely adored this book because of course she is a reclusive Hollywood icon from the 1950s and 60s. Yeah, so I'm going to be right on top of it there, you know, because, <laughs> you know. She has seven husbands, decides she wants to tell her story, uh, calls this woman who works from a quite good magazine but she's got no name and wants her to write her life story, her autobiography, only to be published after her death. Now, the one thing that Evelyn Hugo teaches this girl is to fight for what she wants. So she does. She wants to keep her job at the magazine until she can write the novel, the, the autobiography, but she also wants to. So she says, look, I'm not going to write your story unless you let me have a cover photo and story for the magazine to which Evelyn Hugo agrees because she realizes that this girl and I can't think of her name Monique 
to is learning from her and we learn about all her husbands how she escaped from New York to Hollywood uh, all the husbands she met along the way her true loves her best friends everything I cried at the end of this book it broke me this book absolutely broke me I loved it um absolutely fantastic but it is worth the hype I gave it five stars because I just adored it you know I could put context into it because I know a lot about Hollywood history as well so when they say they went to zeros or they went to didn't want to go to Schwab's they went somewhere else or they went here or they went there I sort of know the history of the place I know these places so to, to, to me uh, I, there's a lot in there for me permanent collection the next was a Folio Society book. I will take it out of the case so you can see it. It is The Ret Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. I gave this one three stars. I love Thomas Hardy. His writing is so floral. It is beautiful. The, the description is beautiful. But it took a long time to get to the point. You know, you met a couple of the characters early on, but it got, took such a long time to get to the main story, which basically is about um, these two women and three men. So these two women marry the man the other person wants, kind of. And there's another man who helps with it in a way that he's there, but he's not going to be the one that they fall in love and marry. He's just one of these people who helps people. Uh, he's a reddleman. So he, for instance, finds the one girl on her way home because she was supposed to get married, but she didn't get married because it all fell apart because they went to the wrong place with the license so they couldn't get married and she was walking home and he found her and he took her home in his car yeah it's quite complicated I'm not gonna lie and then her cousin comes home who was wanted to to marry her at one point but he marries just the other woman um Eustacia who wanted to marry the woman that the other girl married um and in the end it's about what happens at the end and how it all works out in the end sort of <laughs> um yeah a slow burner for thomas than on that one much prefer things like the return of the native i get to grips with that even test of the d'urbervilles i read I, I rate higher i think i can't get it back in its case but i do like these old folio society ones they do reprint them pretty much exactly the same but i, I just pick them up from uh, ebay wherever i can Okay, after Return of the Native, I had my first reread of the year. There was two rereads um, in January. The first one was My Sister Marilyn. I read this to do a TikTok video on. I haven't actually finished done it yet, so I'll probably film that afterwards. This is the story of Marilyn Rowe, here, and this woman here. This is her sister, half sister, Bernice Baker Miracle. Um, so when Norma Jean, what was she, 12, 13? she found out she had a half-sister named Bernice who was so many years older than her and living in Kentucky and they started writing to each other and it's how they came to know each other over the years. Marilyn um, and her sister got together a few times, uh, a couple of times as Norma Jean when she first became Marilyn and then later on when she lived in New York after she split with Arthur Miller and had her gallbladder surgery, Bernice came to stay with her it's about all the things that they went through together, the letters that they wrote. There's actually some facsimile letters in here, which is really nice. And it also tells the story of how Bernice found out that Marilyn died, which is really quite sad um, because she was on holiday at the time and they were driving home over the weekend that the death was announced, but their radio was broken. Everybody in the world knew about it before her sister, which is really sad, and how the funeral was arranged and all such and such. Now, I, I think this one has a four out of five star rating. It is a very personal story. There are some dates that don't correlate with what we know, but in general, it's beautiful. Now, the reason I read this in January, because for years, nobody knew whether Bernice was still alive or dead. If she had been alive she would have been 101 I think but apparently she died back in May 2014 but for whatever reason the family kept it quiet which is fair enough but recently a photograph of Bernice and her husband Paris's grave uh, surfaced online and so we now know. We still don't know about Mona Ray she would be in her 80s now so we still don't know uh, whether or not she's still alive but uh, it's possible. 
So yeah, uh, I remember when this book came out, it was a time before the internet. We got so excited about new books back then. I still do mine, but tracking them down was a lot more difficult and a lot more fun. Although it's still exciting to get those packages in the post when you know it's Marilyn coming. Another film related book I went through this month is The Films of Betty Grable. So as you know there are lots of, well I don't know, there are lots of films of books. For, for instance I've got the films of, uh, complete films of Marilyn Monroe, I've got the films of Jean Harlow, I've got the films of Clark Gable, I've got the films of Mae West and so on. So and, and most of those came out in the 70s, 60s and 70s. This one however came out in the 90s. Betty Grable did not have a filmography book until the 90s. That is so wrong. And it's only ever been published in this one edition. It's quite hard to get hold of. Now, you can get it on Amazon. I got it on eBay. It was a bit pricey, but I desperately wanted it. I had some Christmas money, so I bought it. Now, all it is is literally a list of her films in chronological order with some photographs. Which I love because I am a huge Grable fan. I love it. So it's in this book if you are on the Marilyn groups that I showed a picture from here. If I can find it, it's in the biography section of her and Harry James. And my edit, what I said was, because I was looking at the dress she's wearing. If I can find it. Oh, there's so many, so much in here. It's a really good book, mind. Kids, it's this one. It's this dress, the same dress that Marilyn wore when she put her hand and footprints in Grammans because it's almost identical, if not identical. Who knows? So I gave this one a four out of five because it's not a complete book because she appeared in so many short subjects um, before she became a star. She started making films when she was like 13, she was underage and in fact they lied about her age to get her in and then she was fired when they discovered how old she was. Um, that there may well be still films that they don't know that she made out there and she made films under the name of Francis Dean, they're listed as well and there's a load of short subjects in the back as well as her feature films and it is fantastic to have a list of some of the films that I want to try and track down and in fact I added two Betty Grables to my collection in January. Um, the films are Pigskin Parade, which also stars Judy Garland, and That Lady in Ermine, which I can't wait to watch, because, and another Marin, in fact, and it will be a TikTok as well as some photographs for the internet, the piano used in That Lady in Ermine is the same one that was used in How to Marry a Millionaire. After that, I read something completely different from Hollywood. Eeny Meeny by MJ Arledge. This I bought second hand, probably at a charity shop or at Tesco um, on their charity shelves. And um, it's been sitting on my TBR for over two to three years. Well, so, since I last did book top properly and I stopped doing that because I wasn't reading as much because I was spending all my time looking after Jennifer. Now she's older, quite rightly so. I have to look after her, she comes first. Now she's older, I can read a lot more. And I read over 200 books in 2021. So now that's why I'm doing a bit of book talk and a bit of booktube again because you know I love reading but this was horrifying. So basically this is the story of somebody who kidnaps people in couples. Doesn't matter whether it's male, male, female, female, male, female. Locks them up somewhere they cannot escape from, there's no exit. Leaves them with no food, no water, nothing except for a phone and a loaded gun with one bullet in it. The phone rings and they're told that whoever kills the other can go free. They have no choice. They have, one has to kill the other one in order to escape. So Helen Grace is looking into it. This is the first Helen Grace one. And she learns that the survivors may well be living calling cards, although not necessarily, because there's no guarantee on who's going to kill who. And who the killer is? Well, obviously, the, pers the perpetrator in this is full of twists and turns. It's quite gory. It's quite shocking. You know, there are horrible things in it, like the pregnant officer, the very last one, she's trapped with one of the other officers somewhere and they're looking for them and they can't find them they've been missing for weeks like for three weeks or something they're still alive and she's pregnant 
drinks her own urine to survive. That's how horrible it gets. But it's brilliant. And maybe not three weeks, but they've been missing for a while anyway. But I did give it four stars. It was gripping. It didn't take me long to read this, considering it's quite a... And I do have another one up there. I think it's book three. Two more to go and we're done. This is a long video. I, lo I haven't done one of these for such a long time. You will have seen this one in my book haul. Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read this in one sitting, pretty much. I read this on Saturday when I, well, I was going to go to read it at the hairdressers, but he only kept my hair, so I didn't have time. Like when they dye it, I've got plenty of time to sit and read for hours. But Jennifer was feeling a bit poorly. She just wanted to cuddle me, so I just sat there and read. So a Verity by Colleen Hoover is a thriller. It tells the story of a writer who's on the brink of ruin. She accepts a job to finish off the story. Uh, there's a series written by a lady named Verity Crawford. Her husband, Jeremy, um, hires her. She goes to the house to look at uh, Verity's notes. Verity is in a some sort of vegetative state. Um, and... Lowen is there to try and make sense of the stories. However, when there she finds a autobiography written by Verity, which does not paint her in the nicest light. In fact, it tells some very horrible things that she has done. It's very, very twisty, very, very turny. There's a lot of uh, sex in it. And I'm not keen on, on a lot of sex, but it is, it is pretty pivotal to the story. Um, so I can let it go. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it, gave it four stars. I mean, considering I've picked up two books on BookTok recommendations this month and I've enjoyed both of them. I'm liking my BookTokin, guys. I, I do. And BookTube. I still watch the BookTube videos and if I see anything I think, oh, that looks good. I, I jot it down. So that's it. And the last one of the month was another reread. And as you know, I've been rereading Terry Pratchett, but I only read two last year, so I'm, I'm, I've read the third one this year. I'm not going to do a Terry Pratchett challenge or anything, and I'm just going to read them when I feel like it. Equal Rights, the third book in the Discworld series. This tells the story of Escarina Smith. So this um, story basically starts when, on the night she's born. She is the eighth, seventh child of a seventh child I think it is. Is it seventh? I can't remember already. Badass. Oh yes so it's the eighth child of an eighth child but it should be the eighth son of an eighth son which becomes a wizard. However the eighth child is not a boy it is a girl and girls can't become wizards apparently. Hence the title Equal Rights. Um, so this is where we first meet Granny Weatherwax. She's not the fully fleshed out Granny Weatherwax we meet um, in uh, Weird Sisters. But hey, who cares? She's still brilliant. And it's the tale of Escarina who wants to go and become a wizard. So Granny tries to teach her headology and to become a witch. But the magic is too powerful so she, she can learn but she learns both basically um but in order to control the wizard's magic she needs to go to the unseen university and out more pork to learn how to control it properly however they won't accept girls so we learn about her on the way and all the trouble she gets into because she's very good at that and what happens when she gets there on the way she meets a young man named simon who is also going to the unseen university to be a wizard because he's very good at the theory However, they end up in the in-between place, fighting off the dungeon dimensions. Lots of librarianness in here. We love the librarian. A lot of ook. It's got to be done. That one's a four-star read every, every time. So those are all the books that I read in January. I'm very pleased I did 12. Um, I'm looking forward to see what's happening in February. February obviously is a shorter month. And I'm reading a bigger book, but that's okay. You'll know all about that anyway. I really hope you've enjoyed this ramble through my bookshelves. Um, we'll be back to colour in very, very soon with our completed pages. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sorry. I'll see you soon. It's nice to see you. It's nice to do a face-to-face -face one that's not a weekly vlog. It really is. It's nice to put some makeup on. And uh, mostly it's because we went out today for Jennifer's birthday. But so you know what day I filmed this. <laughs> But I'm off now and I'll see, I'm going to start coughing. I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you've read any of these books down below and what you thought of them. I'll see you soon, booktube. Bye.